Hello and welcome back to CEO.ca's Inside the Boardroom. My name is James Fetterman. Today, I'm joined by Shane Williams, President, CEO and Director of West Red Lake Goal. Shane, it's great to see you today. Great to be on, James. Great to be on. So let's kick things off with a quick recap. Can you give us the key facts, the elevator pitch for West Red Lake Gold? Yeah, West Red Lake Gold came about really as a, as a vehicle for, obviously, people are aware of Frank Justra and his track record of creating large gold mining companies historically. And, and West Red Lake came about as the next stage of that story, really. And so we ended up finding an asset called uh, uh, the Madsen Mine, which had gone through the CCAA process. And we bought that Madsen Mine. So really, we're a fast-track developer. We have all the infrastructure in place with a good team and good backers. So that's really the pitch of us moving forward quickly into production. Okay, very interesting. A few points I'm going to pick up on there. But maybe if we could talk about that relationship with Frank Justra, uh, you know, how did that come about and, and what's his role in, in the company? Yeah, look, Frank, uh, as people know, in, in ca- Canadian mining, has built a lot of successful large gold mining companies over the years. Um, and he, ha- he has been out of the business for quite a while. Um, but he sees the setup for gold, the macro setup for gold and, and uh, the future of the rising prices of gold. And if you go back a year, um, he's a bit of a contrarian. If you go back a year, year and a half, nobody liked gold. Gold was not flavor of the month. And, that's where we saw an opportunity to get an asset and bring it back into production. And if you can move towards that production as gold is rising, you get a lot of leverage to that gold price. So that's how we both got together. I'm more of a builder operator. Frank has his capital market background, etc. And it's a good match of, of trying to build a gold mining company over the next number of years. He's a he's the largest shareholder. He's he's quite involved in the project. He's he's promoting it as his project. So it's good to have a backer like Frank as we go forward. Yeah, absolutely. Very well known, very well respected. And as you said, capable of delivering on, on large scale production stories. So definitely someone you want to have uh, on board. I want to talk about uh, a news release you put out this week. Uh, you're doing a cleanup operation of the mill on site, uh, formerly owned by Pure Gold, where you've uh, increased the estimates for, for gold recovery. Uh, and it sounds like there's going to be potentially quite a large amount of gold recovered from this mill that was not previously uh, on the cards. Can you tell us um, maybe a bit of the history of the project? You, why is the mill there in the first place? And how did you discover uh, some of this extra recoverable gold? Yeah, so so one of the challenges of the pure gold um, era with the management team was they were having a lot of difficulty between reconciliation, between what was produced on in the mine and what was produced from the gold, from the mill. And, and normally they're very much aligned. And so one of the challenges we had when we went in, we had we obviously wanted to clean up that mill. And so we in the first stage, we recovered a, a, a reasonable amount of gold. And then we went and looked at the mills, the ball mill and the sag mill. And you, I could see there was a lot of opportunity to clean those systems out. There had been a lot of gold built up in the system. And so we, we went in and we cleaned out those mills. And, you know, initial estimates are, very, very good of how much gold is in there. And when we investigated even further, we found that the, the, there were certain parts of the mill were installed a little bit faulty, which create those areas to trap that gold. And so, you know, I put we put out a release today. I expect it to be much larger. And actually, once we see that value, you'll see sort of that value. It's really, it tells to the approach of the team. We're much more a technical team. We're much more project builders. And we're looking for that sort of opportunity to build value in those assets. Yeah, it's certainly a unique way to add value. Uh, I, I want to talk a bit more about uh, the work you have planned this year. So uh, geochemical sampling and regional mapping at the Madsen project, uh, 15,000 meter diamond drilling program uh, at Rowan. Uh, can you walk us through what are the goals for these programs? Yeah, so so really at, at the Rowan property, you know, last year we, we went through and did a lot of drilling. And um, Rowan, we're, we're kicking off now um, for the back half of this year. And, and the real opportunity of Rowan is to grow that project. You know, this drilling will focus on growing the resource, infilling the resource and making it bigger, really. That's kind of the priority for the Rowan. Um, on Madsen, 
We're doing a lot of drilling underground. This is highly definition drilling to move the project forward. But we have a huge land package that we picked up as part of the Pure Gold Asset. And we see a lot of opportunities across that land package to grow sort of satellite deposits to feed to the Madsen Mill. So it'll be really some early stage across that uh, package of ground to really identify targets that further on we can drill and look at opportunities to grow and bring that mill. When you have the mill and the infrastructure, you know, you can bring in smaller deposits to feed that mill. And that's really the long-term strategy. And this is the first stage of that on the Madsen property and the wider Madsen property. Okay, and, and can you walk us through some of the targets that you've identified for this year? Uh, you know, the North and South Austin zones. Uh, you know, how have you how have you honed in on these areas, and, and what are your plans there? Yeah, so the North and South Austins um, are really new areas to the story, um, and they were no they were actually known by previous operators, but because of the challenges, they didn't really have time. So when we went down on the, on the ground and started to drill there. We saw these as opportunities to grow the deposit. And so we did some early stage drilling. We saw that their potential to grow and, and we really focused on these areas because they're new areas of mining. They're close to existing infrastructure. They're, it's very easy to move those into production, those two areas, which would add to the full profile of the main mine. So that's how we were focused in on those areas. Okay, great. And I, I understand that you're moving towards uh, your trial mining uh, can you walk us through the significance of that and maybe some of the timelines? Yeah, we, you know, as we move forward and get closer to production, there was there are some, how would I say, apprehension around this asset because of the failure before and the issues associated with this mine. And part of doing this trial mine is to really do some test sampling to really understand the reconciliation to show that we've managed to get the ore body understanding correctly, we're drilling, etc., and do that reconciliation between what the model says and what the actual output is. And that's really a de-risking phase as we move forward. Great. And I think uh, you know, a statement uh, about that de-risking was, you know, in your recent financing, you, you issued gold-back notes. Uh, can you walk us through you know, that vision for near-term production and how that was a, a key part of your financing? Yeah, if you remember, uh, James, you go back six months when we really started. Equity markets were not there at all. Everybody was not there. And so, you know, where we think the market cap of this company will be and where it is at the moment, there's a lot of upside. So, you know, in order to do financing at this lower level of share price, you get a lot of dilution. So we came up with this innovative solution that minimizes dilution to new shareholders and existing shareholders. This gold structure and actually it's been used before very in the last run of gold. And it's it's kind of a, f a fixed debenture based on the price of gold with a floor price of gold at 1800 And the investor gets the difference between the upside in gold and the floor price of 1800 is paid as an interest rate. Um, so it's quite a very profitable for the investors. But for the company more so, it allows us to raise a large amount of money with minimum dilution, which is fairly innovative in the industry given where it was. So that allows us to advance our project a lot further along as we would have, as we like. Yeah, very interesting approach, and I guess one that will be paying off uh, you know, for investors as gold price appreciates, but also for yourselves, you're not diluting the company at low levels. Uh, Shane, really interesting to hear about this project. Just to wrap up, uh, can you tell us, you in your own words, what sets Red West Red Lake Gold apart from the competition? Yeah, I would I would argue that West Red Lake has one of the best setups of a developer. We're in that developer phase. I mean, if you look at the backing of the likes of Frank Juster and his network and his ability to, to, to companies, we have a very strong board um, of our board of directors. These are people who've built large mining companies. Tony McCooch, who was famous from Kirkland Lake, Duncan Middlemass from Weststone. So these are boards who've built big, big companies over time. So that aligned with Frank. And if we have, we have a management team that have a lot of experience, like myself, of building mines and operating mines. And then at the same, on that, we have an asset that's easily into production. So that's a very good setup as a base to build a large gold mining company over the next number of years. Well, Shane, looking forward to more updates throughout the year from you and from the West Lake, Red Lake Gold team. Thanks so much for joining us today. Excellent. Thank you very much, James. Great to be on.